In this photo editing tutorial, we'll take this photo and transform it into this using Luminar Neo's incredible new light depth tool. And along the way, I'll share a bag full of editing tips and tricks like adding atmospheric effects, lighting effects, and color grading too. Now, I know a lot of you have upgraded your version of Luminar Neo already, but if you don't see the light depth tool in your version of Luminar Neo, you need to grab the upgrade pass from Skylum. I'll put a link to that along with a discount code in the description below because you'll need that to follow along with what I'm showing you in this tutorial. Right, let's get into it. Luminar's new light depth tool allows us to redefine the lighting in our two-dimensional photo as if it was in three-dimensional space. So we're gonna use this tool to help us with a full edit on this photo. If I reset this photo and we look at our original, which has already been processed by the photographer, which is JC Silla, you can see it's a really beautiful emotive photo, but if we look at our histogram here, you can see that the entire right-hand side of the histogram that represents our highlights is missing. For example, if we went into the develop section and I boosted that up, you can see that now we have a fuller range of tonal distribution, but it doesn't really look that good. So what I'm gonna do is use the light depth tool to see if we can't sculpt some more interesting light on our model. So she's the main player in this photo. I've identified what I want to do. I want to bring our attention to her. Now, one of the things with the light depth tool you need to be aware of is you don't have to use the effect over the entire image. We have the ability to steal areas with our mask. So I'm just gonna go into a brush here and demonstrate what I mean. So I'll set the amount to about 50% so that I can just start to paint this effect in. And as you can see, I can just start to brighten up the areas that I want to. If I wanted to darken down that background there because it was making the background darker, I can do that as well. Another great thing with the light depth tool, just like any tool inside Luminar Neo, we can reapply it multiple times and that allows us to really finesse the look that we're after. So what I'd like to do is accentuate the light on the right hand side of her cheek, maybe on her collarbones and darken down some of those other areas as well. So I'm sure most of you are familiar with how this tool works now, but if we focus on the image inside the tool, as I move this slider up and down, it's moving through two dimensional space. The AI has analyzed the photo and it's recognized the shapes in the photo. So you can actually see that the geometry of her face is actually recognized by this tool. If I make this a tighter beam here, you can see that that light just moves across her face. So we can set this up very precisely to do what we're after. So the right hand side of her face, that's what I'm wanting to illuminate with this tool. So before and after, okay, it's starting to head in the direction I'm after. If we want to soften the effect off, we can absolutely do that. We can warm the light up if we wanted to, but I'm I'm pretty happy with the color grade as it is at the moment and we can decide if we want to darken down the area nearest to the camera or we can work with the area further away darken that down around the corner there or brighten it up if we wanted to this tool just gives us so much flexibility and i'm really enjoying using it let's have a little look before and after i'm starting to like the direction of this you can jump into the edit stack and see that we currently just have two light depth tools applied and we can toggle the before and after and just check that we're happy with it. And for this first instance, I feel that we're just getting a little bit too bright on the chest area here around the collarbone. So I'm just gonna erase it just a little bit because it's mainly her face that I want to draw attention to before and after. Yeah, that's a bit better. Then we have the secondary light depth tool and just because we can, let's give it one more go. Okay, let's add another version of light depth and let's come into the masking section, toggle the before and after and just ask ourselves, where do we want to apply this effect? Where are we liking this? And for me, I want to just sort of reduce the brightness level of that painted area in the background before and after. Maybe just add a bit more lightness onto her face before and after. And maybe down the right hand side of her body as well, just so that we're helping to really round that three dimensional form of the body and identify a brighter right hand side from the left hand side here. So we just have a little bit more three dimensional sculpturality. Is that a word? I think this is one I've just made up, but let's go with it. Early on in my editing, I like to clean up the photo from any distractions. And just in the background here, we've got this rather bright pipe and a few little speckles on the floor. Easiest way to clean those up is with the clone tool. And rather than get rid of them completely, I'm just gonna knock them back with a strength at around 50. I'm gonna hold the Alt key on my keyboard. That's gonna set a sample point and that's gonna allow me to sample a point and then paint that over anything that's just distracting me a little bit. So I'm just gonna paint over the pipe here 
and just knock that back a little bit. So before and after, you can see that those things have not been removed, but just reduced. When you sample from a point and you want to paint over an area, so this pipe here, you can see that I've sampled right on the edge of her arm. That's gonna allow me to line up that with the edge of her arm further down and then paint outwards from that area. So concentrate on the bottom right. This was before the clone tool and this is after, before and after we've just knocked back those distracting elements. Now I really want to give this portrait more of an emotional feeling to it and we can do that by adding some atmospheric effects and as I explained in the last video now in our processing is the time that we want to add the effects once we've drawn attention to something so the subject of the photo which we've done by sculpting the light adding a bit more contrast then we cleaned up any distracting elements so we've taken care of that now it's time to add our atmospheric effects so what I want to do is add a sense of light coming from the top right of our photo and Luminar Neo gives us so many clever ways to do that and one that I don't really show very often is Magic Light AI. In terms of a name for a tool it sounds really naff but we can actually create some pretty good effects with it. So what we want to do is go to the brush control, choose add and make sure that the intensity is sat nice and high so that we can clearly see what we're doing and we just click in that top right corner. So we now have a magic light added, which just looks pretty useless at the moment. So what can we do to improve that? Well, let's crank the size up for a start so we can see what we're dealing with. And if we push the beam width to 100, it sort of smears those beams together. But if we take it all the way to zero, we completely get rid of those beams. And for what I'm after here, which is a sort of glowing effect from the top right, that's what I'm after. And you can see that now we've actually put that point up in that top right, we can grab this glow amount and push that up and add this atmospheric glow light from the top right hand side. Currently the whole photo is a wash with light and that is because our size is set all the way at 100. Now we've set it up the way we want it and we can see what effect that's having. We can just work with that size and just pull it in so that it's just starting to kiss that light across her face before and after. Now that could be enough for you, but I always like to show you other methods that we can use. So let's dive into something else. Let's go into the neon and glow tool. Now I showed this in a recent uh, video in landscapes where I did the smiley face technique. Okay, so you've got to draw a smiley face. Very important there's a smiley face. There's enough grumpy faces out there. We want to keep things smiley. So what we're going to do is um, push the amount all the way to 100 so we can again see what we're doing before and after. Now here's something that's really useful to us, this atmosphere slider. If I push that up, you can see that it's just adding this nice soft glow across the photo before and after. And currently we've got the pink pony club light going on, which we don't really want, but we can grab the hue slider and move that left and right across the spectrum until we find a color of light that we actually want to add to the photo. And don't worry if you think, well, I want a kind of ready pink light, but that's far too intense because we have this whiteness slider, which allows us to subtract white and therefore have a more intense color, or we can push that up all the way. And now we have a completely neutral light added to the photo. So before and after. For this one, I think I want just a little bit of color and I'm just gonna move this around until I find something that I like the look of. Why don't we try and add a nice warm light before and after. Now, if you're thinking, well, hang on, Anthony, everything's gone a bit nuclear up in that top right corner. Absolutely, it has. And well, I hate to say it, but this might be one of those times that we don't want that little smiley face. So I'm just going to erase him. And instead, I'm just going to put a pinprick point up there. Well, the pure white flaring is still showing up. And that is a consequence, unfortunately, of just how hard I've pushed these sliders but it's okay. There's several ways that we could deal with that if we want. We could come into the masking section, come to the brush in erase mode, and we could just have a lower strength and just sort of knock back that top corner if we wanted to. But it is going to create a sort of dirty look up there. So it's not ideal, but that is one way to deal with it. Another option would be to actually clone some of this brickwork and just put that over the top right corner. And you know what, in this case, that is what I'm going to do. So I'm just going to sample a little bit of brickwork from over here, click over here and start painting over. And that's going to get rid of that kind of gray effect and steal those pixels from there. So before and after. Okay, that's a bit better. 
So while I do like this kind of soft ethereal look we've got going on, we have lost a little bit of impact. So if you wanted to reintroduce some very dark black pixels, let's say over the left hand side, so we had a nice transition from very bright in the top right hand side over to a darker left hand side, well, several ways we could do this, but let me show you a technique that I really like. What I'm gonna do is right click on the layer over on the left hand side, and I'm gonna duplicate the layer. So currently we have an identical layer, one on top of the other, but here's the magic. We're gonna change the blending mode from normal to multiply. Look at that, from normal to multiply. So we just click it and now we can grab the opacity slider and say, okay, how much of that darkening effect do I want in this scene? So let's say we wanna set it somewhere around 60%, for example. We don't have to apply that over the whole photo. We still have the ability to come in with our mask use brush mode and we can either paint it in or erase it. So I'm just gonna build the effect up by painting it in. I'm gonna work with about 50% again. I know that I want the left-hand side darker, so I'll paint over there, paint over the left-hand side of her face, darken down the bottom of the photo. And if we wanted to, we could even come in with a tighter brush and sort of create a dodge and burn effect where we're darkening under a cheekbone there, darkening under the chin, even under the clavicles as well, and down here under her top as well. So here's our current before and after. I really feel like we're adding a nice bit of atmosphere to this photo, but we're not done yet. Let's grab these two layers and I'm going to merge them down. That's gonna allow me to start applying tools again to the photo as a whole. So anything that we apply now, for example, is going to affect the photo as a whole. Okay, so that's what we want. Um, not enhance AI, because that's gonna to be too aggressive for this edit. Let's look at some other tools that we don't often address with my editing. So for this one, I'm gonna jump into dramatic because we've made our local adjustments, now is the time to start working on our global adjustments, as if we're applying filters over the entire photo. So I love the dramatic filter with a very low local contrast, because it just adds a nice bit of punch to the photo. So I'm gonna add a bit more dramatic contrast to this, and then I'm gonna kind of knock it back just to enhance the mood. So I'm gonna do that with the matte filter. Again, this is one I don't really use very often. If I want to create a sort of washed out look, often I will do it with the curves tool. But why trouble with the curves? I mean, old habits die hard for me. I grew up using curves in Photoshop and Lightroom, but Luminar Neo gives us a tool that allows us to create this matte effect very easily. So we might as well leverage it. If we wanna keep the color in there, we just boost the vividness up a little bit. So here's our before and our after. Maybe I'll just knock it back a little bit because I want to add another tool on top as well. Let's go for a bit of a soft focus glow. Um, I'm gonna push this very heavy so that you can clearly see what it does before and after, way too much. Uh, but I wanna keep this nice and soft. Don't wanna push the brightness too high. And I also don't want to be introducing too much contrast either. So we'll keep that set somewhere around there. But we also have the ability to say, do we wanna warm those highlights up or cool them down? I'm gonna do my color grading in a moment. Look, I'm just looking at the before and after with a full amount of this tool. And now I've got it set up how I want. I'm just gonna bring it all the way down and I'm just gonna sort of ease it in. It's one of those weird tools where as soon as you've gone from zero to one, it's quite a big difference between the two. But you know, on this occasion, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna go with this. But even with that setting at one, if you find that's just too much, you can use my little trick that I like to do, which is reduce that amount by 50% very easily. We go into the brush mask mode, increase the size all the way to 400. So we have a nice hard edged brush. We have our strength set halfway. And now I'm just gonna make a S shape snake the way over all of the photo, release. And now we have half of the effect that we just set up. And as my absolute final step, now we're gonna deal with color grading. I love what the photographer did initially with the color grade. And so I'm gonna play into that. We have a sort of minimal blue plus yellowy orange color grade going on at the moment. And if you're never sure exactly what colors exist in your photo, what you can do is jump into the color tool and just grab the saturation slider and start increasing that just so you can temporarily see, oh, okay, yeah, there's definitely blue. There's definitely orange. Okay, before, after, okay, I know what I'm dealing with. And then you can just reset that. 
Make sure you throw it away from your edit stack because we don't want that. And now you understand what colors are in the photo, you can use that to inform your color grading decisions if you in fact want to do any color grading. And I do. So what I would normally be doing is adding some nice warming colors into those highlights. So for example, pushing some yellows into the highlights and conversely, I would normally be adding a bit of a blue toning into the shadows before and after. So that's kind of doubling down on what was already there. However, on this one, what I think I'm going to do is actually flip the script. We're going to go for a blue look, sort of a bluey cyan in the highlights. And in the shadows, I'm going to go the other way and actually add an orangey yellow something like that. And now I'm going to play with a balance slider to see, do I want more of the highlight effect or more of the shadow effect? And you know, it's all personal preference. I'm pretty happy with how it's set up and we can always grab the amount slider and see whether we want more or less of that effect. I'm going to keep it relatively subtle, somewhere around 30. That's fine before and after. And I'm going to call that done. That's my edit. So here's our original that was pre-edited by our photographer, a nice emotive low key image. And here's my interpretation edited with Luminar Neo. Before and after I've taken what was already a really nice photo and evoke a nice soft ethereal image. I hope this video has helped you learn something today. And if it has, do me a favor, just let me know in the comments below. I really love hearing from you. If you want to watch another one of my videos, the algorithm, the mighty YouTube algorithm thinks that you might enjoy that one that's popping up right there. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, I'd love to have you along for the ride. You can just click that AT button right there. I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye for now.